Hello, so you want to make a 3D box of your game. I'm going to try to give a very basic tutorial for basically using Blender from zero. I mean, you don't need to know anything about Blender, 3D animation, anything. Okay, you just need a computer which is which can run Blender. And I'll try to like cover everything in the most basic way possible. So you just need to follow the steps and then we will start with just creating the, the game box and how to uh, apply your, uh, your art and your covers to the sides. And I guess we will continue from there to more stuff, but let's just start with the box. So just uh, go to Google, type in Blender. Blender is free and it could probably work on most rigs if you don't do very heavy stuff. And I think for this purpose, most computers should be able to do it. So just go ahead and click download and install it. It's very, very simple. Open it up and you should get this. Okay. Just a what's called the default cube. Usually people delete it right away because they want to make something else, but we need a cube. So we'll just keep it here. We have here uh, a cube, a light and a camera, which will all be important for creating the render of your game box. So first of all, uh, uh, selecting is very intuitive. Just left click, select whatever you want. And now if you want to move it, you need to press the letter G. Okay. G is for moving things. Okay, this is uh, moving freely. And now you can see I have three axes. This is the X axis, the Y. And then we, of course, we have the Z, which is up and down. So to move anything, you need to press G first, and then X if you want to move on the X axis, Y if you want to move on the Y axis, and Z if you want to move on the Z or Z axis, depends where you're from. Press uh, escape to cancel whatever you're doing and it'll just snap back to where it was when you started. If you want to pan the camera around, press the middle mouse button. And um, for other options, you uh, right click, but we won't need to get into too much of that. Okay, so that's just very, very basic. For now, we won't need anything else. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we will obviously need to change the size of this cube. Oh, uh, wheel, mouse wheel is zoom in, zoom out. So if we want to change the scale, we can do the same thing, just like with the movement with G, we can do it with S. You press S and it can scale up and down. You see it stays the same proportions. We, if we press after S, we press X, we can scale on the X axis. If we press S, Y, it will scale on the Y axis and S, Z, it will, it will scale upwards. So you can make this tall beam. Okay, so uh, we basically need to figure out the dimensions of our box and then we can create the cube to be the same size. So if you see, there's like a tiny little arrow here, we can pull it out. And here we have a very handy menu that shows you all the information about the object which you've selected. So you see, if I move it, press G, move it around, you can see the location coordinates are changing. If we press S, we can see that the scale uh, um, values are changing and Last thing that we haven't touched yet is rotation, which will also be important. Guess what you need to press to move uh, on a rotation axis? That's right, you need to press R. So same thing, R, moving around, moving around. I wanna, on the X axis, press X, Y axis, and the Z or Z axis. You know, I'm originally, my dad is from uh, England, so, I grew up saying Z, but then I lived two years in Baldur, so um, 
there I learned the Z. So it's sort of muddled up. I'll probably say either. Anyway. Okay, so uh, last thing we have here is the actual dimensions of the cube. Right now, the cube is two meters. Now, I know probably some of you have huge games, but I don't think you have a two meter uh, sized game. So we'll have to scale it up. It's best to always stay as close to reality when you create renders because it just makes things work with lighting and shadows and stuff like that and physics not that we will get to that so here i have handy um the cover of the next project i'm working on which is dino discovery by travis horn it's a lovely little game uh where you find uh dinosaur bones and you create like a, a skeleton by uh, turning tiles so he uh, supplied me with this cover now we can see this is a spread of all the cover. We have the front, the top, the sides, and the bottom. Now the easiest way to do this, there's two ways to do this, uh, a simple way and a little bit more complex. We'll learn the simple way. But there's one way to do it, which we literally project this image onto the cube. It's called uh, UV editing. Um, but I've learned that cutting it up to every single piece and then just applying it to each of the sides of the cube is just simpler. And I think it will be much easier that way, especially for uh, first timers. OK, another thing that I have here is the dimensions of the box. So we have and this is uh, the metric system. We have uh, 220 by 220 by 70. So we could already go ahead and use the skills we've learned to make the cube, the default cube, the right size. So we see that we have the dimensions here. We could literally just type them in. So click here, you type 220, obviously not meters, you can just write centimeters. Why did it do that? 220 centimeters, sorry, millimeters, millimeters. Yes, you see that's, yeah, that makes more sense. And here we said it was 70. Okay, much smaller. Okay, what I just did is I pressed the uh, period button, which is on the number pad next to the zero. There is the, the dot, which also says delete, and that will zoom in to whatever you're selecting. So, you know, I could be like somewhere far away. And if I have it selected, the cube, press that button and it zooms right in. Okay, so I might just give a few effects. So, yeah, I think this looks good. Um, obviously, we will want to uh, position it differently, but let's leave it now lying down. It will be easier to uh, map the texture of the box onto it. OK, so let's now get each of those pieces ready. Now, I hope you have, uh, if you don't have Photoshop, let's just close whatever it's not relevant. If you don't have Photoshop, uh, most other image editors can do this. You just need to make sure you're uh, very precise. I have the guides here, uh, but you know, you can just make sure you get it as, as uh, accurately as possible. So I'm going to select this crop and then do a quick export as in PNG. So now I have the front control Z deselect. Let's get the left side. Okay, when you have those guides, it sort of snaps right into place. So it's very comfortable. Crop export as a PNG. Now this is left side. Right. Okay, I might just speed it up because I think you get the idea. So we have all the pieces we need. We have the front, left side, right side, top, bottom. Let's go back to Blender. And how do we apply those images? Well, every object in Blender needs a um, material. In order to apply material, we need to go to this little um, ball thingy. OK, 
Okay, press here, and now you see it's applied with just a basic gray boring material. How do we change that into uh, our images? We start by going into um, here, base color. We scroll to image texture, and then you click open. You need to navigate to your folder. Okay, and if you click here, you can actually see the images. And we need this. Okay, start with the front. Now this is going to look a little funky. Oh, we can't see it. Why can't we see it? It's because uh, with Blender, since we get, you can get to very heavy scenes and, and every scene you need to work on it in a different way. Sometimes you're modeling, sometimes you're texturing. So we have different render options, which are up here. Okay, you have a wireframe. Okay, which is, you know, you can't see anything. Then we have solid mode and that's the default. That's what you see in the beginning. And then we have uh, a viewport shading, which sort of applies uh, a temporary lighting HDRI, which is basically temporary lighting. It won't look that way in the final, but it's a good way to see the textures you have on your objects. The final one is the actual render which in this case um, is lit from this light. Okay, we have one light. If we turn it out, then you see it becomes dark. Let's now stay with, um, with uh, viewport shading. Okay, so this doesn't look right. What happened? Right now, Blender is trying to cover the entire box with this one image. We want it just to be the front. Okay, so here it's gonna get a little complicated, but trust me, uh, it would be simple the moment you do it once or twice. Uh, go to the shading menu. Okay, here we can work on the material itself and change its uh, uh, roughness and colors and, and the image that we chose before. But right now we would just wanna focus on where the image is supposed to be. So we need to tell it to map it just the front here and to do that, we need to press Shift A, which is how you add new things in Blender. Search and add a mapping node. Okay. Connect the blue vector to the blue vector and add texture coordinate. And here you want to apply the generated to the first one. Whoopee! There we go. Now it's basically projecting the image from the top. It's hitting the box and sort of smearing on the sides and mirroring itself on the back. Okay, for here, this is all we need for the front. The side ones, we're just going to have to tweak a little bit the mapping to make sure they apply on the right edge in the correct, uh, in the correct way. So how do we add another? And by the way, don't forget to name everything. You see I named box and box front. Let's add a new material. Click the plus and then click new. Call this the new name. So left side. Now we want to apply the image of the left side of the box. So again, base color, image texture, open and select the left side. Okay, now we need to tell it where it's supposed to go. So either press tab or go to edit mode, click the correct side, make sure you're in face select. Okay, third one here. So we want the left side and then we select the left side from here and click assign. Okay, something happened, but it's still not the right uh, it's not, it's not aligned properly. So here we need to do the same thing we did before. We need to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node, connect them up. Okay, and almost there. Now we just basically need to rotate this so it will be aligned properly. So let's try rotating the Y axis. Oh, there we go. Hello. Now, obviously, how many degrees we need is exactly 90. So you can just type 90. Sometimes you need to, you know, I'm not good at math. 
Uh, so I usually just play around till I find the right one. Sometimes it's the X, sometimes it's the Y, but eventually I just figure it out. So let's continue. Next one. Do the exact same thing. Add a new material. Give it the right name. Base color. Image texture. right side, go to edit mode, assign, um, mapping, texture coordinates, connect everything up, and Minus 90. Okay, now I can see it's something is a little weird with proportions here. Let me just see why that is happening. A lot of Blender is tweaking. Okay, tweaking, changing things, playing around with them. So it's funny because it just doesn't seem like to be the right size. I think the box is supposed to be slightly smaller. So let me just look into that. Because 70 is just, maybe the cuttings isn't right. Okay, this looks better. Okay, so I don't know why that happened, or maybe the proportions are wrong, but I just tweaked it a little. And it seems to work now. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Not bad. Let's go back to layout mode. And we have our box, but let's uh, let's put it up and, and get a render. So remember what we said in the beginning, you click G. Let's move it on the Z axis, move it up. You can, uh, if you press on the number pad, you press three, one, seven, nine, you can see exactly from the sides and from the top and it's just very easy that way to navigate so i press g, uh, g and z okay to place it exactly on the so-called ground r on the x-axis and you can just write 90 and i'll put it right up okay now we want to bring it up again so g z bring it up Okay, uh, yeah, there we go. So let's now set up the lighting and create a render. So first of all, we need to see how this looks from the camera angle. How do we do that? We press the zero in the number. The number pad is one of the most useful places in, in Blender. Most of the stuff you just play around from there. So you, zero button, oh no, that's far away. How do we get close? Well, you can move the camera the same way you do with every object using G and then X and Y. But if you've ever played a video game, there's a much simpler way to do this. You play, you press shift tittle, okay? Which is the little squiggly thing that's left of the one. And then it basically turns into a video game. You can move around with W, S, A, and D. So let's fly to our box. Find a nice angle. If you want to go up and down, it's Q and E. Okay. So this, this looks good. Okay. And now don't forget, we need to see how it's going to look with the lighting. So we need to go to our final render mode. Okay. So this is a little dark. So remember, if we press the um period key we can see where the light is 
it's way, way too far. So G, move it closer and zero back to the camera view. Okay, now to light something, this you can have a whole tutorial about how to light something. To put it as simple as possible, you want some a light from the front and maybe a little bit of light from the back. So we could always press Shift A, that's for bringing in something new, light, creating another point. It will appear in the middle. Okay, G, move it a little, move it a little, Maybe bring it just, you know, a little bit here. Okay. This one. It's a little bit too much light. Okay, so if you go here, you can get to the light options. You could turn it down a little because it's, it's burning the frame a little bit. And this one, we could also turn down a little. Okay, so let's see how this works because everything will eventually look different between the final render and the viewport render. This is called a viewport. So to see how it's going to look like, you need to press F12 for a quick render. And yeah, there we go. That's our first render, not bad at all. The top is completely burnt, so we can't see that. And it's a little bit uh, faded here, so Let's do a few more things to fix that. Let's start by, um, if you press the, the, the I here, you can turn this off and see exactly how it's affecting the scene. So I think we can, let's either take it way down. Okay. Maybe just have it just a little bit. Okay, and this one, bring it a little bit here. Okay, now we have a little bit more from the top. I still don't like how it's completely burning the frame on the top here, so let's try moving it. Maybe we'll do without it. Yeah, let's just do without it. No backlight. Okay. Um, also, if you want to have it isolated, because if you see F12, you'll get this gray background, which you will probably need to get rid of. Now, I want to adjust the, the, the angle here a little bit to be able to see the top of the box a little bit more. Okay. So I'm just moving it using both the just regular buttons. Uh, G, X, Y, Z, and also playing around with the, with the camera uh, video game view. Okay, so just a little bit more. As you can see, this is the first time I've ever done a tutorial. So I'm still trying to figure this out. It's just a lot of playing playing around with things till you get what you want. There's no no right way to do anything in a blender. So we can even just tilt the box a little bit. There we go. So if we want the background to be completely transparent, uh, there's a way to do this. You need to go to the render properties, go to film and click on transparent. And that way you can have like an isolated uh, PNG of your box, which you can use. One more thing I forgot to mention is uh, it's not enough just to press on the I because then it will still appear on your final render. You need to actually turn the camera thing off so it will, won't appear at all or, you know, simply delete it. And if you can't see one of these icons, you just need to enable it here. See? Okay, so let's try that again, see how it looks like. Okay, much, much better. So how we, do we save this? We just want to go to image, save as, type box render, whatever you want, and save. You can go, yep, and this is ready to go on your Kickstarter page.
Thank you very much. I know this uh, tutorial was a little messy. It's the first time I tried doing something like this, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some more and go a little bit in depth into a complete game layout, maybe adding some textures, card linen, and, and all this fun stuff like that. But just wanted to give sort of a very, very basic introduction to Blender for anyone that's considering uh, diving in. It's a lot of fun. So hope you enjoyed this. Bye.